Kia ora mai tātou, tēnā tātou katoa. The House is resumed. Sorry, the sitting is resumed. The House is in committee on the Health and Safety Reform Bill. The question is that part two stand part. I call the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Um, Mr Chairman, thank you very much. And I'm, um, I suppose pleased is the wrong word given the gravity of the issues that we're discussing in this legislation, but it, it is a good responsibility to be able to contribute to this um, debate on the Health and Safety Reform Bill. I was in the House prior to the dinner adjournment, and I want to make a couple of comments about the Minister's responses, which were commented on at the time by the presiding officer, and just say that um, even though I disagree with the Minister and where he and his caucus have got to on this, I really appreciated the fact that he actually listened to the comments that members made and responded, not always in a way that we would agree with, but that's quite different than a number of his colleagues who are really dismissive and arrogant. And I think it indicates a little bit of the respect um, that this issue deserves. And I, so I want to commend the Minister for that. I held the position of Minister of Labour um, for some time, and I think it is one of the heaviest weights of responsibility when you think that laws that you are passing could determine whether a person goes to work in the morning and comes home safely or is never seen alive again. That is a huge responsibility and one that this parliament should and I hope will over the coming hours of debate on this legislation um, really put an effort into. I'm really saddened that the um, internal debate in the National Caucus has left us in the position that we have, um, particularly concerning the relevant portions of part two, because from my perspective, there's lots of things we could disagree on. But if we talk about international best practice and how we might actually make people safe at work, regardless of how big their workplace is or what sort of industry it is, I, I would really have assumed that this might be an issue that the whole of Parliament could agree on. Um, but it's, it's really, it, not, not entirely, but in, in some substantial part, the issues that are raised in part two that have contributed to what seems to have been a pretty fractious discussion in the National Caucus and ended up um, with a really watered down version of what was originally intended by the previous Minister, the Honourable Simon Bridges. Um, Mr Chairman, before I return again to more specifically the provisions in part two, I just, w I just want to acknowledge um, a, a friend, um, a man I admired greatly, a member of the Littleton Fire Brigade and a, a maritime worker who was killed in Littleton Port not very long ago. Uh, the court case in relation to his death has recently been heard and and Littleton Port Company pleaded guilty to causing his death. Um, there's, there's no celebration in that. I think it made the process easier for the family. It certainly made it easier for his workmates to find out what had happened and, and you know, so that we can all learn from it so it never happens again. But nothing will take away um, the fact that our community, um, it's particularly the strong Littleton community, doesn't have the joy of Brad Fletcher being part of that community anymore. So I want to pay tribute to him and uh, the work that he did on the waterfront and hope that nobody else ever dies um, in, our, in our port. The five subparts in this really go to the heart of the thinking about how much responsibility should be carried by one individual how much should be um, shared between, you know, if there's different, the, the Littleton Port is a good example, actually, Mr Chairman, where you do have the port company, but lots of contractors working there, lots of different arrangements. Obviously, ships coming in from overseas, there's a, a mire of, um, of responsibilities that you could allocate depending on the activity of the person, and that's what this part seeks to do. Uh, I'm, I, I've, looked, I've looked at the, I've, I didn't sit on the select committee tragically, but I've looked at a number of the provisions. For example, the duty of the PCBU, a new language that we've got in New Zealand now as a result of this law, who manages or controls a workplace. And that's where you have more than one you know, obvious employer, not a standard workplace, one where you've got a, a, more than one person. And in 32 2 A and B, there's a note that talks about the comparison with the Work Health and Safety Act in Australia. 
And I'm really keen to learn, this is the only chance we'll have during the committee stage, from members who were on the committee or from the Minister. How, how do our workplaces compare with Australia? I know, for example, that we have far more small workplaces, small businesses in New Zealand than Mr Chairman. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. I know that we have far more small workplaces in New Zealand than they do in Australia, but I'm not sure if they have you know, the same comparability where we have more than one employer on a work site and whether this actually works. Because for me, the last thing I want to see this legislation do, and I'm anxious about it because it's got new terminology, it's got shared responsibilities, and it's got, I think, an onus of proof which will tend some towards litigation rather than taking responsibility. And that is the last environment that we should be creating if our aim is to make our workplaces safe. What we should be doing in attempting to make our workplaces safe is say, how do we get everyone on the same page? How do we ensure that the worker who's been there on their first day through to the person who's been there for 50 years and about to get their gold watch, and any person who's in a responsible position, whether it's a manager or, or the, the boss, the owner, director, company director, how do we get them to not be risk averse, to not say, I don't want to end up in court or with a big bill for something, to say, we will create a culture where people work to, in a collaborative way, in a positive way, to create an environment that is safe for everyone. This isn't a doing people over. This isn't a catching people out. This is an open culture. The, the, the minister should understand this, actually, because he used to be in the health system. And it's very comparable, in my view. The sort of culture that you need to create is one where people put their hands up early to a mistake or a risk, and say, I've seen this, it shouldn't be happening, we want to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. How do you, how do you create that culture in every workplace? I don't know how this does it, and I, I would love to think it does, but it seems to me that what we've done is created a new regime of you know, classification, a PCBU. It, it doesn't even spell a word what public servant was on that task. <laughs> uh, so, but seriously, it is, a, it, it is a, a new regime which will render comparable previous court cases and policy decisions uh, unable to be used. So, Mr Chairman, while, what, as, I, as I said at the outset, I'm really sad that it's come to the point where we haven't got the whole of Parliament singing on the same song sheet and setting out what I think New Zealanders want us to do which is to take the lessons that we have so tragically learned, not, not just at Pike River, but gosh, that had to be such an, a blot on our thinking about the way we make our workplaces safe. If, if that didn't make us sit up and say we have to do things better, then, then I'm sure that nothing would. But, but we have a terrible record of workplace safe, safety and health in New Zealand. And I'm not sure that we've got our heads around um, getting it right. The five subparts in this health and safety duties are one is the key principles. The second one is the one that I've been um, referring to earlier, the duties of a P PCBU, person conducting a business. The duties of the officers and workers. The offences relating to the duties and the duties to preserve sites and other notable events. So, uh, Mr Chairman, I think there's... Because this part introduces so many new things to our health and safety regime, um, for me, it's one of the most important, even though it might not have as substantial policy issues contained in it as other parts of the legislation. I haven't even got on to the later, the later stages yet, but I know that colleagues are keen to take calls, so if I don't get another call, <laughs> I'll try and take another one later. I'm, I'm interested in the final three, oh sorry, more than three, the, the final five um, clauses in this part, which relate to other matters relating to offences. Actions taken to prevent harm, 
the proof of intention not required for certain offences, and as I said earlier, the duty to preserve sites, the duty to notify notifiable events, and the requirement to keep records. For me, these all sound like new provisions and new standards that we are expecting the workforce to understand, that we're expecting employers to understand, that will set a new regime in the offences and legislation.